Hey, it's John and Mike. Brew-dudes.com, that's where we're from. And uh, back by popular demand, I guess. Was it popular demand? Some people asked for this. Yes, we, because we were debating the first time we did a, uh, a water experiment with tasting different brewing salts in solution. We decided to go with uh, calcium chloride rather than calcium sulfate. And then people were like, you gotta do gypsum too. So here we are, we got here gypsum, we have gypsum with a plus, which we're not, we're not gonna talk about. We'll talk about this one afterwards. Plus. I'll tell you when to taste that one. Okay. okay. So the same old story as the last time. If you didn't see that video, check it out. It'll be linked at the end. But also we have uh, uh, different concentrations um, from our right to our left, it gets more and more concentrated, or the, the, the amount of the substance gets higher and higher. This is spring water, not much. Yeah. And then it's a 125 ppm of gypsum in this, then 250, then 500, then 1000. 1000 ppm. And, and um, we'll we, talk about it when we, we get yeah, there. Yeah, okay. Uh, you can definitely tell that there's yeah. uh, something in this. Yeah. Uh, I think we even said we were not going to use gypsum because it's not as soluble. Some solubility issues. So yeah, so we've hit a solubility threshold between the 1000 and the 500, uh, at least in this experiment. So, okay. um, but you would probably never go to 1000 ppm in a beer. <laughs> so we'll see. Anyway, so you can cleanse your palate with a little fresh spring water. Yeah. Yeah. Tasty. All right. Mm. I'm just tasting the difference between one, two, five, and spring, and honestly, I don't, I, not very perceptible mm, to me. It's interesting. Mm. 250, there's something, go yeah, it's, uh, ooh, that's chalky. <laughs> You're getting it now, huh? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Really? Um, wow. Okay, now it sort of almost is a little bit soapy. Yeah. Um, and then this one, this last one, I'm going to I can't wait. swirl a little bit. You don't need to actually get the grit in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's powdery. I mean, oh, it yeah. But it's, um, it's not as offensive as that much calcium chloride. No. Right? I mean, as far as it's calcium-ishness, yeah. um, I, can, I can sense it right in this one. You for can? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's hard after that one, but... There's a very slight, um, it's more of a mouthfeel thing. Yep. The, it, the water is a little bit more fuller sensing on the palate. It's certainly not as dry, crisp as this, but there's like a fullness there. Now don't confuse these words fullness with like, we use right. chloride yeah. for malt fullness and stuff. Just We're just describing how it tastes and what the threshold is. I mean, I can, I can just pick it out here at 125. Remember yeah. that's PPM for the whole molecule, not individual yeah. parts like you would be for brewing. I, I'm picking um, up what you put down there. I think I was sensing more on maybe a flavor comp like yeah. composition, but it's it's more of a when uh, I get the two fifty there's feel. a there's almost like a soap like quality mm. to it. Mm. Right? That's when I said that that's chalky. Yeah, um, yeah. And then it gets worse from there. Like yeah, to yeah, a yeah. point where you're like, I would never do this to anyone. Mm, mm, <laughs> like, mm, hey, mm. taste this water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I can sense it there. I think you're more, more strongly yeah. here, at least in the first pass. This is when you first hit yeah. you. Um, and then up here, there's definitely, the best way to describe it is chalky. I mean, calcium, it's calcium. Calcium is sort of, you know, it's it's a mineral, It's yeah. you know, and it has a, a drying effect no matter what. Yep. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm gonna just go like this. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna get you, <laughs> just so you can cleanse your palate before we do the, the yeah, bonus. The, the bonus. I didn't, I didn't wanna. Um, Thanks. I don't think it was necessary for us to do a whole titration series on this very last salt, but I wanted to make sure we covered it before someone said, well, what about this one? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to cleanse my palate. Okay. Now this is a thousand PPM of a mystery brewing salt, and it's the one that we really haven't covered. Mm. You would never go this high. Hmm. Oh. It's actually, in terms of its total impact, yeah. it's like way down here. Yeah. For everything we've tasted, it's way down mm. here. I, that, I am totally blown away by that. Totally blown away by that. Mm. But it makes sense once you know what this is. This is Epsom salt. Oh. This is magnesium sulfate. Yeah, okay. So um, magnesium sulfate, the magnesium 
isn't having much of a flavor impact whatsoever or a mouth feel or mm -mm. there's a little bit of a softness i assume like we we're getting back here with the sulfate but the magnesium i mean i don't really know what magnesium tastes like but <laughs> that's not it's not metallic no it's not whatever it's not rocky um, minerally but yeah. so the question would be well why if calcium sulfate has a flavor to it why not just use magnesium sulfate because this is a um, laxative. <laughs> Great. Magnesium sulfate in high enough quantities, they use that to give you uh, for, <laughs> for en enemas and stuff like that. Mag sulfate delivered intravenously, which you wouldn't get this effect from drinking, a, maybe if you drank a ton of it, but you would, it also dilates the blood vessels. Ah. Right? So if your blood pressure is emergency too high, it'll give you a mag, mag sulfate to uh, help dilate your blood vessels so your blood pressure comes down. But um, in a beer, you probably, very rarely do I ever add more than a gram of this, you know, 10, 20 ppms of magnesium to, uh, to a beer. Rarely. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, like to, I like to add magnesium, at least one gram to a full 12 gallons of brewing liquor just to get some magnesium in there for the enzymes in the mash. Got it. Right? So calcium and magnesium are what we call divalent cations. They just have a plus two charge. And enzymes usually are uh, bound with calcium or magnesium inside them. Um, so in a brewing, especially if you're using RO or distilled water, which is really low in magnesium, having a little extra in there is just an insurance policy to make sure that some of the enzymes, if they if they want magnesium versus calcium, that you've got enough of it in there. But it doesn't take much at all. It really, like like I said, a gram, two grams wow. at most. In like, for me, when I'm doing 12. full batches, like 12 yeah. grams of 12 gallons of brewing liquor. Um, but yeah, you just need a little bit. And most of the time, too, actually, it's just more of a mental game because the calcium can, in most cases, do the same job as magnesium in those enzymatic reactions. So I just usually put it in there because I'm playing around with it, but. Sure. Um, so that's mag sulfate in case somebody was gonna ask, what about <laughs> Epsom salt? <laughs> now, another question someone might ask, well, why don't you do, uh, what about the carbonates, right? Mm, yeah. Sodium carbonate, which is baking soda, or calcium carbonate. Yeah. Nobody's asked about that. Well, you're not gonna get calcium carbonate to dissolve at any one of these levels because it requires an acidic environment, which means, you know, you really probably shouldn't be adding chalk, just regardless of who your favorite guru is, talking about brewing chemistry, um, you're not gonna get chalk to dissolve in water, maybe a little bit in a mash because the pH is a little bit lower, right, yeah. but if there's not enough carbon dioxide around to help create those ion, that ionic state necessary, it really doesn't dissolve <laughs> even in your mash. So it's, it's not worth it. If you did need to raise the pH, that's what you would use a carbonate for, um, if you needed to raise the pH, you're better off using something like sodium hydroxide or uh, baking soda, which is instead of calcium carbonate, baking soda is sodium carbonate. But that stuff gets really salty very quickly mm. on the palate. Mm -hmm. um, so even faster and almost just as fast as um, sodium chloride does. So if you really needed to raise the pH, which is almost never the huh. case, unless you're brewing water naturally, it was like really sort of, if your if your source water is like a pH <laughs> six or yeah, something, which which isn't which isn't unusual per okay. se, okay. But if it is lower than pH seven, you felt like you needed to lift it up. You probably should not use that brewing water. Awesome. So anyway, there we go. Really? Um, this one really blows my mind. Yeah, I was expecting to taste something there, but it's, especially you know. at a thousand ppm, right? Yeah, I mean exactly. you went for it. I went for it. Yeah. Well, now I get to uh, learn about the laxic of yes. of Epsom. Give it a couple so, hours. I can't wait. Um, okay, well, that wraps up our uh, titration series, I think. I don't think that we're going to go through anything else because no. nothing else is going to work in this type of environment, right? Yep. Nothing else is going to uh, be uh, dissolving in water as readily as these other uh, compounds. So let's just stop here. Fantastic. Hopefully that's helpful. So what's your, what's your big takeaway for you for sulfate? Um, I mean, there's still another big leap to be taken here, which is how it interacts with malt and pr sure. You know, there's still going to be that drying effect of or sulfate hops, for right, right. Yeah, that's what I mean. In, in like your beer, in a beer yep. in yep. general, yep. Uh, chloride does still like seasoning food, amplify malt flavors, and the sulfate 
Um, the sulfate's really more of a lack of chloride almost. Now after doing this tasting, hmm. um, where it's going to dry out that flavor. In fact, I almost wonder if it's more of like just the calcium in the absence of chloride, right? So more of that calcium might be key, key creating that, allowing for the crispness of hops to happen. I've not said, heard anybody say that or suggest that, but I don't know anybody who's doing this. So <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, because that's just the way I'm thinking about it as I perceive it as a scientist now. Yeah. But um, my takeaway here is the, my threshold for this is relatively low. Yeah. Granted, in a 1050 pale ale with hops or whatever, or even like a really low hops beer, a Kolsch or a blonde ale or something, I, I, I wouldn't expect to experience that on the palate, even at 125 ppm. So... Um, I was just curious, for this whole experiment, what do these things taste like completely on their Outside, own yeah, yeah. versus the effect that they're reported to have on the way you perceive the other ingredients in your beer, Yeah. right? Um, clearly, somewhere underneath all that, this is still happening on your palate one way or another. Now, granted, some of these ions, these are just in water. Those ions are going to interact with other things in the beer. Um, so it's not an effective 125 ppm because some of it's going to be involved in other reactions uh, and bound up so that you wouldn't have that flavor. But um, again, I just take away from it that, like I said last time, you know, maybe I want to get my calcium up to that somewhere between 125 and 250 because I know that yep. the flavor threshold is pretty low, yep. right? So if someone's telling you I want a two to one ratio and they're saying 50 to 25 sulfate to chloride, at, in the bare water, I, it's not making any difference on my palate. It has to be probably maybe 200, 100. In order to, um, and a lot of people have said that before too. Yeah. But it's just interesting to taste it in a in a in a naked uh, <laughs> solute. Yep. Um, solvent. Sorry, sorry, people. <laughs> Solvents. My my science friends. Um, you know, in the solvent, um, to just taste it on its own blank canvas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because so. I was going to ask you about the ratios. So you're saying like it's got to be higher rather than like the lower numbers, even though it's the same yeah. ratio. The two point to is, one. Yeah. Yeah. The ratio is is useful, but only once you cross the flavor threshold, right? An yeah. effective threshold. Nice. So, you know, 6 ppm to 3 ppm is really going to taste the same as probably 20 to 10 ppm. Yep, gotcha. You really need to actually get up to a point where that chemistry can have an effect on the beer and then on the palate. Right. Right. So, but that doesn't mean that, like I said, with the magnesium, just getting like 10 extra ppm of magnesium in there is a ton when you're talking about enzymes in the mash doing their thing got it um same thing with the calcium so all right cool well thanks a lot hopefully you got something out of this i did uh certainly going to be playing around with more uh, higher percentages of certain uh uh brewing salts and uh looking at the ratios and understanding that the flavor threshold is another component to think another about component to think when about. you uh put together your water chemistry. All right, so put a comment below if you'd like to. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. <laughs> I'm not drinking that. <laughs> brew on. Cheers.